Between December 15th and January 1st, there were so many great shows. There were so many great fights. And as a result, so many great highlights, submissions, knockouts, absolute brawls that I couldn't fit them into one video. I couldn't fit them into one stream. So we're making it a three-parter. This is two of three. We're going to go rise and heavy on this one. At EFC 40, Beck Sultan... Halai Ulu. And you know, if you got an Ulu in your name, you're gonna f sh up, dude. Pulls off a beautiful banana split, otherwise known as the Suleyev stretch, against a guy with too large of a name, an even larger name that I'm not even gonna. Oh, just... That's it. Oh, my and it takes skill to do that. And honestly, just operating at a high level compared to your opponent there because... I mean, he had the back mount. He had so many different options. But instead, as his opponent's standing back up, he swoops up that leg, right? And goes for that submission. In so. Octagon 53, Octagon with a C, not a K. This is just a good old-fashioned ground and pound finish. Uh, Sundet Ait Cool dominated the first round, the second round. And instead of just with 48 seconds left... Going to the decision, knowing that, you know, I'm probably going to win a decision. This guy, this guy watched the Ultimate Fighter back in the day. I know he did. He may not have understood the context of it all, but when he heard Dana White say, never leave it in the hands of the judges, even if you dominate the first and second round, Ait Cool took that to heart, destroying Brito here in the final seconds of the third round. Thirty seconds, gets the mount. You can see he's tired and just there we go. Holds the head down, and that's it. Not a, not a crazy pretty knockout by any means, but badass nonetheless. Let's move to what this list is based off of. First and foremost, there were so many great finishes from Ryzen Forty Five, and I noted my favorite ones here, starting with. My boy, Suguru Ni, he's the king of Pancrase. He's the two-time king of Pancrase. And he was the underdog in this one. Going up against a very talented fighter who had a lot more experience on the ground. Had a lot more experience grappling. Decided to strike with Suguru Ni. And this is what happened. Oh, brutal. Brutal. Oh! Brutal. Okay, we'll go back to the start here. He was waiting for it. Boom! Time to perfectly. Jeez. God, I love that fighter. I love Seguru Ni on a four fight win streak now, man, in Pancrase and Ryzen. Uh, number two, we're going with Hirora Kondo. He was the underdog. This was a big, big upset. Mostly because Hirora, he had a losing record going into this one. Joe Arai is a mother. He was on an 11 fight win streak coming into this one. Pretty heavy favorite. The thing that I overlooked, the thing that I should have checked before picking him quite confidently to win because Joe Rye's got some nasty striking. He fought two weeks prior and it was an absolute war uh, in Shudo Japan. So he was already banged up from a fight. Clearly, maybe not visible damage, but was still clearly not ready to take a fight. And I'm not taking anything away from that of Hirora Kondo, but Kondo showed up in great shape, in great fighting form, and took advantage of a Joe Arai who wasn't as aggressive, wasn't hitting as hard as I'm used to seeing him hit. And as a result, Hirora Kondo, head kick and some beautiful strikes to end it. He's a little bit more pressure. I'm surprised that he's going as a big up on it. Huge upset, guys. Next, let's go to Igor Tanabe in his fifth pro 
fight, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. In his fifth pro fight, he goes up against arguably his best competition yet. Now, a washed UFC guy, pushing 40 at 38 years of age, Anzai. He's a wrestler by trade. And look, Anzai was the huge underdog. He was like plus 800. Igor Tanabe, again, fifth pro fight. He used to roll, grapple, and compete as a heavyweight. He has now made the permanent transition to welterweight, which is absolutely insane. I mean, his moniker is the Fat Ninja. There's not an ounce of fat on him now at all. Igor Tanabe got it done in the first round here, choked him out, put Anzai to sleep without even having it under the chin. He, he put him the, to sleep with a freaking neck crank, guys. We'll end that body triangle too. Out, out, out. It wasn't even under the chin. It wasn't even under the chin. Wasn't even under the chin, man. He is now 5-0 and o as a pro. The fat ninja is now the, the slim trim ninja. Doesn't really have the same je ne sais quoi to it. Uh, moving along here, let, let's move to freaking koozie oh my goodness did not see this one coming at all uh koozie making his mma debut with supposed to have custom rules but as you will see here he did not follow the custom rules in this one soccer kicks weren't supposed to be allowed in this one to protect koozie koozie don't give a fuck, man koozie don't give a fuck. he was the underdog and kota mura his father, famous soccer player in Japan, oh, the irony that Kuzi breaks the rules that were to protect him and soccer kicks freaking Kota Mira in the face to end this fight. Unbelievable. Another one of my picks got cooked, but check it out. Oh, drops him, lands a big right. At first, I thought the ref was just gonna be like, "Nope, like you're done. That that's 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 not legal in this special rules match." But hey, the ref probably forgot, and it just added to the storyline. Now, Kuzi, a very talented kickboxer, making his MMA debut. Kotomira, I think, was like had two or three MMA fights under his belt. Um, so that's why I thought Kotomira was gonna win this one. Just had more. MMA experience, had more grappling experience, but clearly it did not matter. Uh, as Kaposa writes in his tweet here, the rare choke out plus coffin nails by Shinobu Ota. Welcome to MMA. Now there's a little bit more to this one. There's a little bit more to this one. Rusei Ashizawa, he's a kickboxer. He's not the best kickboxer, but he's an entertainer. Covered head to toe in tattoos, face tats, he is just an entertainer. He walked out spitting the worst rap song I've ever heard. It was horrible. I, I don't think the guy can sing at all, but he doesn't give a f He He beat a Koozie in his last fight in Ryzen in a kickboxing match. He was the underdog in that one and then just battle rapped in Osaka in front of the entire audience there. He puts on a great show, but he's not an MMA fighter and he's not even that great of a kickboxer. This was his MMA debut and freaking Ryzen, man. They want Shinobu Ota to get back in the win column. He lost his last fight split decision and they, they needed to give him another win. He needed this one. Ryzen needed this one. They needed their silver Olympic medalist to start getting butts back in seats to see him in particular. And uh, what better way to do it against a guy making their MMA debut? Am I right? And oh my goodness, easy layup for him. Poor Ashizawa, man. Poor Ashizawa. There wasn't really any bad blood between these two guys in particular. Azizawa freaking got Darce choked, comes back to life because Ota submits him. The ref doesn't see it yet. He submits him. He goes, uh, Ashizawa goes to sleep. Ota lets go of the choke. Azizawa comes back to life. The fight's still going on and Ota knocks him out again, dude. And there's the Darce. And he's out, comes back to life, only to get knocked out. Oh my goodness. In this next one here, 
heavyweights, pretty much the only two relevant heavyweights in Ryzen, which is why they don't have a actual real heavyweight division, which is why when Rampage was joking on his fading out podcast, he could probably hop into Ryzen and, and get a fight. Like, you're not wrong, Rampage. Ryzen literally had a 49-year-old fight just this last weekend. Mikio Ueda catches Sudario with a beautiful leg kick to the head. He was the heavy underdog. He's a kickboxer who has not found any success really in mixed martial arts. The only guys that he's beaten were absolute cans. Veterans were, were throwing him around, kicking his ass in his first pro fights. But hey, he does have kicks. And even in my breakdown, I said the leg kick and just his body kicks are, are going to be his biggest tool here. Uh, Sudario has knockout power. He came into this fight the favorite at 8-2. and two, And there was conversations that if he knocked out Ueda, that maybe the UFC would bring him over again not to say that he would be a champion or even i mean he might be he might have been ranked in the ufc heavyweight division because it's horrendous um there were talks around that but they were silenced they were silenced as the underdog pretty much does the only thing that he could have to end the fight in his arsenal and that is a nice head kick from the big boys in round two Biggest win of Wade's career, man. Biggest win of his career. Not that his career has been anything special or long thus far, but final one in Ryzen, ladies and gentlemen. Then we'll go to our number one spot as the best finish for this episode. How can I not go with the main event of the evening? Now, I'm going to toot my horn just a little bit and say that before Juan Archuleta had those weight issues, before Juan Archuleta almost had to pull out of the fight before Ryzen gave Juan Archuleta the okay to make wait an hour before the freaking fight for the fight to still go on. God, I love the Japanese commissions. Before all of that, I said Kaya Sakura was going to win with a counter shot when freaking Juan Archuleta either shot for a takedown or blitzed. I really thought it would be more takedown, either uppercut or knee to the face, but instead he employs his signature knee to the gut and he took out the depleted and overly aggressive Juan Archuleta. Let's take a look. And literally, Juan Archila, like, he, he was cutting weight an hour before making this walkout. No joke. No joke. So a big knee to the gut would do that. And again, I know it was against a depleted Juan Archuleta who was basically just crawling. Even though he ran to the, the ring, he was figuratively crawling just, just to get in there and, and make his money and put on the show. And, and he did address the Japanese fans and say, I'm sorry. Like, I was sick. But look, no excuse. I'm here. I fought. You guys got a great highlight out of it, even though I was on the other end of it. I did like to see that by Juan Archuleta and... Uh, Ryzen did give him another fight, which was announced, uh, I think, two days after. So it's not like he's just done from Ryzen. They're going to give him another fight. Um, they know that, you know, things happen in this sport. But for Kaya Sakura, Juan's case aside, he said if he won in exciting fashion, that he was going to test himself in the UFC. Now, other than losing to Horiguchi and Minisaku, and Minisaku was still in his prime, even though he beat John Dodson, I'd say Minisaku's Ogikubo is not in his prime. Kai Sakura has pretty much beaten everybody else in Ryzen. Like, unless we see him fight Horiguchi again, I mean, there's nothing really left for him in Ryzen right now. So despite even winning the title, he might defend it once, but if the UFC comes calling, he was vocal about saying that he does want to test himself in the UFC. So keep your eye on Kai Sakura. Let's see if he vacates the title right away and maybe Juan and his new opponent fight for it, or maybe he defends it once if he gets another nice win uh goes over to the UFC join us tomorrow for the third and final part to our end of December regional MMA and combat sports best finishes this one took place at RWS Raja Dameron World Series where Dan Nanchai uh Rachanon defeated Marwin Hooley. He's on a five fight win streak. This was in the first round of the RWS World Series and he brutally and beautifully KO'd 
Mr. Hooli with a flurry of uppercuts. Currently, Rachanan is the 2019 gold medalist at the Bangkok Thai World Championship. He won bronze in 2021 there. And in 2022, at the World Games, he also won a gold outside of Thailand. That one was in the UK, so the UK World Games. And like I said, placed gold in 2019 and bronze in 2021 at the Bangkok World's Muay Thai Championship. He's 22 years old. He has a record of 76 20 and one with 18 knockouts make that 19 ladies and gentlemen take a look i'm i'm just, I'm just gonna say unlike the ryzen ref our rws ref did not give a f left and a right wobbled him right uppercut he's out he's out I told you guys this one was savage. I told you guys this one was savage. Boom. Oh no. Oh yes. It is so fucking brutal in slow motion. I've, I admittedly have not watched in slow motion yet. Until now with you guys. Holy! I'm, I'm I'm buying the zone right now. I'm buying the zone so I can watch this. Talk about being saved by the ropes there. My goodness. Well, that's it for today's list. Part two of our end of December best regional MMA finishes, along with combat sports. Join us for the next one as we finish off we put a bow on 2023 and we welcome 2024 with our best mma finishes from the regional scene as well as the combat sports world let me know if i missed any let me know which one you liked the most comment and subscribe and i will see you on the next one